And a very warm welcome to the Quaker Beagle. As always, I'm Dave Cash, and this is the Ins and Outs Vinyl Review. Yes, welcome to the Ins and Outs of Vinyl Review. This is a show where I scrutinise two records from our stock and I select one more from my own personal collection to take a look at along with you guys at home. As you'll see this week, I have picked three absolute pieces of music gold. The first of which is a Pink Floyd classic that leaves me with something of a dilemma. The second is a Fleetwood Mac album that has tended to live in the shadow of rumours and today we're going to set that straight though that's if we can get into the record itself and last but not least it's a reissue of a movie theme that has influenced my life since 1984 though it has something of a, a smell to it. So the first record I've picked out today is a record so famous it doesn't even need its name on the cover. It doesn't even need anything on the cover except for bricks, in fact, because it's, of course, Pink Floyd's The Wall. Probably, or arguably, the second most famous Pink Floyd album, uh, or maybe the second most popular album after The Dark Side of the Moon. In fact, many people, of course, will prefer this one. I do personally because it's got it's got so many songs on here that I absolutely love. Uh, Comfortably numb, of course, the wall parts one, two, and three. Uh, the show must go on. Is there anybody out there? You know, really, uh, really, really famous tracks. And even if you're not a Pink Floyd fan, these songs will have uh, will have come into contact with your ears at some point. I guarantee it. They are outstanding and of course that means the whole record's outstanding this is a double album this is a 1979 original first pressing by the way which leaves me with something of a dilemma which is how do i price this as a dealer i don't really like to get hold of first editions which sounds kind of strange counterproductive but because i want people to come into the shop and see that i've got records at, at reasonable prices if they come in and see this bad boy and say, wow, this guy's charging Discogs prices, let's go somewhere else. And the reason I say Discogs prices is Discogs says anything up to £200 for this album, and I strongly disagree. Um, I, I'm probably going to price this up eventually when, once I grow a set of, uh, of brass ones and charge something much, much, much more reasonable. I always like to try and get a little bit below the market value um, when I'm, I'm charging customers, simply because you know I want you guys out there to come to down to the shop at Not Just Vintage and say, fair enough, you know, that's a good price. I'm, I'm happy to buy from this guy over and over and over. So yeah, it's a first pressing. It may be in the shop, it may be available purely on our Discogs page, um, so I'll leave a link to that down below. But in the meantime, definitely head down to the shop just in case it's in there. And if you subscribe to our Facebook page, you'll probably find out before anyone whether it's down there or not. Okay, so check that out, facebook.com forward slash quirky beagle. Keep an eye out for updates and see what I decide to go with with this bad boy here. So again, that is a 1979 copy of uh, The Wall in really nice condition, I think. A um, few little bumps on the back here and there. I don't know if you can see those in the light. Uh, there's one just here, I think. And uh, But other than that, not in bad condition at all. A really nice record. Both records are... Very, very playable, no no marks on them that I can see. Of course, it doesn't have the uh, the sticker that used to go here. Uh, it wasn't really a sticker, it was more of a, a cling, 
clingy sign, clingy sticker thing. But it's uh, it's not there. So other than that, great album. Keep an eye out for it one way or the other. So the next album is Fleetwood Mac's follow-up to Rumours. This is Tusk. Sadly, this has kind of lived in the shade of Rumours, and I don't think that's a very fair place for it to languish because though Rumours is an exceptional album and certainly deserving of its iconic status, this one isn't too shabby either. This one contains a lot of the, the more recognisable Fleetwood Mac tracks such as Sarah, What Makes You Think You're The One, uh, Tusk, obviously. But, I mean, those aren't mega selling tracks. Those aren't tracks that people um, would normally associate. They tend to go for the rumours tracks. But let me tell you, What Makes You Think You're The One is an absolute stonker of a song. I don't know if people say stonker these days. It's a bit of an 80s thing, but I, I love it. I love Lindsay Buckingham's vocals on that one. They sound angry. They really suit the question of what makes you think you're the one. It, it makes you feel told off, almost. Um, Tusk is a very, very good song. It's one that I love as soon as it comes on, like that doom, 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 doom. Um, that tribal sound. Most people, I imagine, would sort of say, oh, what's this? If they're not familiar with Fleetwood Mac, they would simply think of it as something a little bit weird and they would skip over it. And those people would be missing out because as you and I know, that's a fantastic song. Uh, it's it's very, very curious, very quirky, very much like uh, Fleetwood Mac. You know, it, Fleetwood Mac was a, a clash of personalities ever so often, uh, or every so often. And these songs really, uh, really sort of follow that. They're so, so different, each one. Sarah tends to be the commercially most successful song, I think, on this album. And it's also... One of my least favourite Fleetwood Mac records, I'm afraid to say. It is one that I tend to skip over, but everyone's got a favourite. And a lot of people have also got least favourites. And Sarah, is, for me, is one of the least favourites. My favourite record, by the, or my favourite track by Fleetwood Mac, which sadly isn't on here, is Big Love. So, uh, yeah. But don't get me wrong, this record is not too shabby. This is a great record. This is a 1979 release. I don't know what edition it is. It's on Warner Brothers. It's in really, really nice condition. And let me tell you, it is not environmentally friendly. This is a heavy album. It's got two records in there. And each record is heavily protected by not only the outer sleeve, but then I'll just slide one out here. Um... Just put that there. Great artwork, by the way. Fantastic. And you've got no, uh, no shortage of artwork to pick from because inside this sleeve, much like a Russian nesting doll, we've got another one. Um, this one, photographs of the band. And then inside, finally, you get to the record when we can figure out. So... And there we go, there's the record inside. So it's a little bit of a puzzle to get through all these and it can take you a little while to go from uh, record one to record two. So if you put the wrong wrong record, wrong record on by mistake, um, it's probably just best leaving that record to run through because by the time you finish putting them away, putting the next one on, you'll have forgotten which track you were looking for anyway. So that is Fleetwood Mac, that is Tusk, and that will be in the shop very, very soon. If not, it's already in the shop, or it may very well be if you're watching this a couple of weeks from now that it's already gone. But definitely, if you're heading down to the shop, check that, check this out. I'm not sure how much it will be, but you'll see that it's not badly priced when you call down to the shop. And now time for our last record of the show. This is, believe it or not, this is Ghostbusters. 
This is the Stay Puft version of the Ghostbusters theme, and this is a fantastic edition. This is a re-release, came out, uh, I think, only about two or three years ago. Um, and it's actually in a, a puffy white cover. Originally, when it was still in the cellophane, it had uh, the Ghostbusters information here and it had like a stay puff thing across there which i've still got somewhere but i'll i'll post a picture just here of what it looks like when it's brand new inside pictures of the big man himself the uh the stay puff marshmallow man all over the place i mean if you're a ghostbusters fan this this record it's quite reasonably priced these days so it's one that you should definitely have uh, it's, it started off, it was anything up to like 50, 60, 70 pounds when I first saw it. Nowadays, you can probably get it for as little as 20 pounds if you search around enough, maybe 25. The record itself, and I can find it, the record itself supposedly smells, believe it or not, of marshmallow. I don't think it still has the smell, but it's a gorgeous white record. Um, on one side, it has the Ray Parker Jr. version. On the other is Run DMC, I think. But, uh, oh, it does. It still smells. It's been a little while since I played it, but, yeah, it still smells of marshmallow. So, uh, clearly the, the smell lasts a little bit longer than I expected. The sound from this, by the way, is astonishingly good i know a lot of repressings reprints reissues special editions and things people think that the sound seems to go down uh, over the years but i don't think so not not from this one the the sound produced on this record was fantastic is fantastic uh, it's uh it's not played very often um but it's still right there pride and place in my collection so what else do you get in this record well let me tell you, you also get some artwork from the movie. You get these uh, sort of slightly holographic. I don't know if you can see that they're moving. Um, this one as well, of the Ghostbusters taking him down, a peg or two. If you're a Ghostbusters fan, um, I originally had two copies, one that I could open, one that I could keep sealed, uh, which was a little bit, I don't know, um, my wife didn't see the point of that. But these days I don't collect as much as I used to, so I, I let that one go. But nonetheless, this is right here in pride of, pride of my collection at home. I absolutely love Ghostbusters, and so as a result, that is staying right there in my collection and unfortunately isn't heading into the shop. It has been in the shop. There's been a copy of it in the shop for a little while um, and it's sold, I think, around Christmas last year. And if I ever get another one in stock, I'll let you know over on our Facebook page. So make sure you're checked in with us over on Facebook. If you haven't done so already, please do make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We don't have many followers and we are a bit desperate. We're not beyond begging. We really, really aren't. But please take the time, subscribe to the channel. And while you're there, hit that little bell icon so you'll be notified every time we upload something new. We upload something new at least every Monday, as well as additional bonus films every now and again. If you check us out right now, we do have a small documentary coming out with regard to the Beatles playing in the Wirral. Uh, that'll be coming out very, very soon. If not, it'll be out by the time you've already watched this. There are regular ins and outs vinyl reviews and episode three will be out probably next Monday. There are so many things going on to that channel that it's well worth checking out. Also, if you're heading down to Not Just Vintage anytime soon, the records behind me will be heading in there very, very soon indeed. Probably once I finish this video, I'll edit it, get it online, and then these bad boys are going down to Not Just Vintage. And if you've not been there yet, 136 Oxton Road, just opposite the new Little, where you can also park free of charge. What else? Um, that's it for now. Oh, 
If you haven't done so already, speaking of Ghostbusters, we have a Ghostbusters competition that closes in just under a week's time, or maybe a week's time. It's a Halloween special, so not only do you get a copy of the Ghostbusters soundtrack on minty fresh vinyl, you also get a copy of the movies, the Ghostbusters 1 2 movies on Blu ray, you get Go Real Ghostbusters Season 1 on DVD, you get a box of Twinkies, a key ring, and I don't think I'm forgetting anything else, so I probably am, but if I do, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. So, to take part in that, you have to head over to our Facebook page. You have to make sure you like the page and give the competition post a like and a share, which is all very easily done and well worth it if you win. And even if you don't, you stand a good chance because we give away an iconic record every single month. So well worth subscribing, if not for anything else, but simply for those free records. But of course, we have so much more going on over there. For example, the Tuesday teaser, which is usually late, so it's on a Wednesday. Uh, we do have other giveaways coming up. We have news of new records and so many other things. We have little polls just for fun. Uh, Instagram as well, Discogs, Twitter, we're all over the place. So you can't miss us. You'll probably trip up over us just by going on the internet. So that's me. That's Dave Cash. That's the end of episode two. Please do get in touch if you've got any records that you think we you or you'd like to see us review in the future, and we'll see what we can do. Take care, guys. Have a very nice day.